I'm so excited. As you know, I'm always excited, but today I'm more excited than ever because if you live in Australia and if you have an accountant, you've probably been trying to talk to your accountant and their phone lines don't stop. So it's, it's as hard to talk to an accountant as it's as hard to uh, get into a hospital right now. So uh, without further ado, I would love to introduce you to Vishal Patel. He's an awesome accountant that has decided to give me 20 minutes of his time so we could ask him what's happening at the moment, how we can access all these grants that the government is giving and give us a little bit of clarity. So without further ado, I would love to introduce you to Vishal Patel. Vishal, if you could please just give us a little bit of background about yourself and how long have you been an accountant and a little bit about you and then we get into the questions. All to you, Vishal. Thanks, Pina. Thanks for giving me an opportunity to interact with people uh, through uh, through the use of technology that we we are heavily using uh, during these days where we cannot see our clients and friends face to face. Uh, so yeah, my name is Vishal. Uh, I run a business called Tax Assist Accountants. Uh, I'm, a, I'm an accountant, qualified accountant based in Blacktown. It's in Western part of the Sydney. Uh, I, I've been working as an accountant, uh, like before starting my own practice, I've been working as an accountant for more than 10 years. Uh, and uh, out of those 10, uh, 10 years, like I, I worked with a few companies uh, like uh, Sony, Apple, uh, as in their finance team. And after having uh, experience, and I always had an, uh, something in my, uh, in my mind, like how can I help people? How can I help small businesses using my skills and expertise? So uh, yes, in 2017, I quit my full-time job and I started my own accounting firm uh, based in Blacktown. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's about me. Awesome, awesome. So I guess, um, as you know, and you probably your phone is not stopping at the moment. Uh, a lot of you, we are so lucky to be in Australia, and the government is trying to help and trying to minimize the economy impact that uh, coronavirus is having. Uh, here in Australia, we can't talk about the world, but at least here they're trying to put measures in place uh, to help us. Now, um, one of the supports that the, the government offered was one that I think it's the cash flow support for small businesses. Can you give us a little bit of clarity on that? How does that work and who, who can apply for that? That's right. Yeah, as you rightly mentioned, like uh, in Australia, government uh, was being criticized uh, early in early days when the, the pandemic started like people a lot of people were saying like government is not fast enough in responding and h helping businesses and individuals but uh, if i see it today like i can see like the, the way government has taken steps uh, to help businesses and individuals that are very very uh, you know precise and uh, perfect steps that they have taken they are trying to help those people and those businesses who are really in need so yeah, uh, the first benefit they announced uh, on 12th of March is the boosting cash flow for small and medium-sized businesses. So eligibility for this business uh, for this package is uh, any business or any not-for-profit organization uh, whose turnover is less than 50 million dollars and they had registered ABN as on 12th of March 2020. So these are the basic criteria to be eligible for this, and if you employ uh, staff uh, uh, in, within your business, then you are eligible for this. Uh, and uh, uh, when I say staff, that means, you know, that there are so many small businesses who don't have uh, people outside their family, but they are paying uh, uh, like uh, their family members because their family members are supporting them in, in the business. So they are treating family members as employees or sometimes directors are the only employees in the business. So all those businesses will be eligible. So they are, there is no exclusion for related party uh, employees in, 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 this, in this package. So uh, how this works is like, you know, uh, if you have an employee, then you withhold uh, PAYG or tax from their wages, or if you're paying yourself director wages or director fees, you also withhold some money from your pay and give it to the government as, uh, as, as tax. So that will be the criteria uh, ATO will be looking for and whatever amount you withhold for the period of January to March 2020, 
uh, your payment will be based on that. And the maximum amount that any business can get is $100,000 and minimum amount is $20,000. So how that works is like once the business has lodged their uh, quarterly business activity statement, which is ending on 31st of March, 2020, uh, ATO will release the payment based on the PAYG amount that you are uh, you are withholding in your business. So let's say some businesses are not withholding or not required to withhold any payments. So even those businesses will get the minimum amount, which is ten thousand dollars, which will be passed on at the end of uh, this quarter, and there will be further payments coming in uh, in 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 next quarter and the quarter ending on thirtieth September, twenty twenty. So those payments will be based on the first payment, which was made to the business. So yeah, this is very, very uh, like a precise step uh, to help businesses in paying their regular uh, expenses like wages or, or rent or uh, those kind of things. Yeah. And how about businesses that do one, one yearly payment? So like maybe they, they've run the business all year and then they just do it at once, all at once, uh, not instead of doing quarterly, they do it uh, yearly. Uh, does that apply for them as well? Yes. So, so far, the, the, the guideline which is given by, uh, by the uh, tax office, they, they have included and they have given specific examples in their guideline. And in those examples, they have mentioned about businesses who are lodging every quarter or businesses who are lodging more frequently, like monthly uh, installment activity statements. Uh, so, uh, government has announced these uh, packages uh, uh, in, in like uh, in, in uh, emergency situation kind of a thing. So not every detail is available as of now but what they have said is like if you uh, believe that you are genuinely affected by this and if you are fall a little bit outside the criteria they will be looking uh, on case by case basis as well oh, that's nice and yeah. another another hot topic uh, and a hot one that was was the job keeper one so can you explain that's right. explain how it works and uh, who is entitled of that yeah sure so job keeper payment is is a payment uh, they have introduced government has introduced to save hundreds of thousands if not millions of jobs in australia so how that uh, the, the main reason behind this is uh, you know the first uh, advice that government in, uh, uh, announced uh, for the closure of some businesses like restaurants uh, uh, nail and health beauty salons uh, they 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 were forced to close and they are not operating as normal but their rent is still going on their employees are still on their payroll so this benefit will be specifically helping those businesses who had employees as on march as of march 2020 on their books and now because of these restrictions they their their hours have been reduced or or some uh, in worst case like they have stood down some employees so how this payment works is like uh, employers can apply for uh, job keeper payments for eligible employees. And uh, the condition for this is any business with aggregated turnover of up to $1 billion and they have suffered drop in their revenue by 30%. Or if the business is big and if their turnover, annual turnover is more than $1 billion, then the condition has increased. Like their turnover must be reduced by 50%. Then they are eligible to get this benefit. Mm. But from my understanding, yeah. they have to have the cash flow themselves and then the government yeah. will give them the money in May, correct? That is right. So uh, as of now, businesses can register online for, for these payments. And uh, once they register, they will get a confirmation from the tax office that they will get further information. And uh, just recently, uh, uh, one day ago or two days ago, uh, this JobKeeper payment has been passed through the parliament. So now it is official. All the recommendation or all the announcement the government made, it's all legalized now. So yeah, in uh, soon, uh, sooner or like within a week or so, uh, there will be more information coming on, on this. I see. But from, uh, if I remember correctly, when I was seeing the interview with Scott Morrison, uh, some reporters asked him, oh, but what happens to the businesses that don't have the cash flow? They can't really be paying, um, their employees now because they they at down to zero because if they're paying uh, rent 
probably rent goes first, otherwise they lose the location and there's so much happening. Uh, and what Scott Morrison said, well, oh, well, those businesses should be talking to their lenders or their banks and, and, and getting a deal with them. Uh, so um, um, I don't know if I'm wrong, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, but th does that mean that he, he wants businesses to go out there, get uh, finances and maybe get a loan from the bank and using this JobKeeper scheme as a, uh, a security knowing, look, uh, within, uh, I've, I've applied for this. So once I get yeah. that loan, uh, that, that money from the, the government, that's where you're going to be getting uh, the, the payment of your loan. Um, uh, is that is that what my understanding or am I completely wrong? <laughs> no, that is right. Uh, so uh, yeah, as you mentioned, like, you know, when government announced uh, this job keeper payments, uh, they mentioned like you must continually paying your employees as of now, but the first payment you will get from government will be in May. So a lot of businesses were worried, like how can they keep employees and keep paying them when their income has stopped? And uh, this was happened in uh, like late March. So there was a couple of weeks in March and four weeks in April. So you are talking about six, seven weeks of pay that you have to manage without getting your regular income. So yes, you can, you can uh, go to your bank. You can ask for uh, some uh, assistance payment, which are uh, already uh, like announced by government. Like government will be backing loans up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for small and medium-sized businesses, but uh, the criteria for getting those loans are different than criteria which are mentioned for job keeper payments. Again, recently, uh, government has announced some relief for commercial tenants. Like if you are operating through a commercial property and if your business has suffered due to Corona uh, pandemic, then you can speak to your real estate agent who is managing your, uh, managing, uh, uh, your property, or you can directly speak with your landlord if you have their contacts. So uh, there is no specific rules how you're going to get that relief. But what you can do is you can uh, put up a case like you can talk to them, uh, saying them you can give them some numbers like this is the loss uh, in, in revenue that you have received in your business. And you have this many expenses like rent, wages, electricity and other things. And landlords uh, will talk to their agents and uh, they will come back to you with some relief. So that is also possible. I see. Now, outside JobKeeper, I remember there was something regarding a ten thousand uh, dollar grant from, but that's uh, at New South Wales. Is that correct? So, how does that work, and who gets this ten thousand dollars? Yes, that is right. So, all all benefits that we talked about until now, that are those benefits are announced by federal government. So, apart from that, all states are also doing their parts. Uh, to help businesses within their territories and their states. And similarly, New South Wales have announced uh, a, a grant, which is called uh, Business uh, Fast Relief for Small Businesses. Uh, and how you can qualify is, uh, there is a, a simple criteria for that. So your business uh, can have up to 19 employees. So it's, this, is for, uh, this is for small and medium sized businesses. So uh, you should have less than 20 employees in your business. Your turnover must be more than $75,000. Uh, then uh, your, you, your business must be registered as on 1st of March, 2020. And your business, you need to be able to show that your business has suffered due to this Corona pandemic. And then you can approach New South Wales government and the application for this grant is not open yet, but it will be done through Service New South Wales. And uh, uh, they haven't started taking application, but there is an end date where you can you cannot make application after that date, which is first of June. So we are expecting this application will open soon. So there will be uh, approximately four weeks time when you have to apply for this grant within New South Wales. I see. Now, uh, let's hope that that gets sorted quick because probably will be crazy. I hope that they're preparing in a way that doesn't happen what happened with Centerlink when the website just went down. So probably this is what I'm hoping that the, the reason why they haven't opened it is just because they're trying just to prepare because they know the, the amount of uh, applications they're going to receive. 
Now, uh, I have uh, some questions. So I have friends, uh, you know, I, I'm a foreigner uh, and uh, at the, I'm, I'm a citizen now, but I have friends that are like on student visas and they uh, run businesses. They've been running businesses for uh, a long time and they're taxpayers and, and they have employees and everything. So um, is there anything that can help these people as well? Like their visa situation, uh, uh, affects anyhow their businesses on applying for this job keeper or anything like that or it, they, yes. it's okay for them so uh, yeah when uh, when someone is on temporary visa who is not a permanent resident or a citizen in australia but if you are running a business and if you are employing people who are australian residents then, uh, then you may be eligible for uh, these uh, payments which are uh, which are announced for the small and medium-sized businesses in Australia uh, so government has not said anything like okay if the business is owned by a temporary resident uh, then that business is excluded they haven't said anything like that but yes tax office will assess uh, some of these payments once you lodge your business activity statements so there is no clear answer for that as of now uh, but yes uh, when we talk about job keeper payments so unfortunately, job keeper payments are only aimed at uh, permanent residents and citizens in Australia. Some of the New Zealand visa holders and New Zealand uh, 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 citizens are also eligible for these payments. I'm talking about job keeper payments, but uh, for, for job keeper specifically, government has said that temporary residents and student visa holders are not eligible for job keeper payments. But there is actually some sort of hope for them is like if you are uh, living in Australia for more than 12 months and if you are a temporary resident including overseas student you can access to your superannuation fund if you have some balance uh, you can access up to ten thousand dollars in this year and ten thousand dollars in in next year I see because that was going to be my next question because uh students are a big drive on the Australian economy. And I think Australia earn makes a lot of money on, on international students. Now I know because when I migrated to Australia, I, I was lucky enough because I'm Italian. So I have a, a, an Italian passport. I came as a working holiday visa, but my husband, because he's Brazilian, he had to come as a student visa and as a requirement back then. And I, I think it's still the same. You need to have 12 months worth of money to, in order to support yourself. And this was the Scott Morrison's answer to, oh, how about, what about your students? But uh, what about the students that are doing a master's degree that takes longer? So yes, they probably already used up all their one year worth and they were just yeah. working that part-time to support themselves here. So, um, so they are allowed to touch their uh, superannuation money. They usually, they would only have uh, access to once they leave the country, correct? That is right. That is right. So this is what I have, I have uh, seen recently. Like if you are on student visa and if you are in Australia for more than 12 months, uh, you can access to your superannuation fund uh, and you just need to have your MyGov account and you can pro uh, put your application from there. So this is, uh, this is something which is uh, available in public information as of now. But uh, one of my clients uh, who actually contacted their super fund and they've been told that because they are not permanent resident, they cannot uh, have access to their super. So there is uh, still a lot of, uh, you know, uh, information is not passed on to uh, all, all uh, parties involved. So, yeah, hopefully it will be clear uh, over the next week or so. So in, in, the, in the example that you just gave, uh, what can this client do now? So, uh, does he have to, to uh, report the, their superannuation fund to the government? How does it work? Actually, superannuation funds are also getting lots and lots of calls these days. So uh, best thing will be to not to contact them directly. Just uh, simply go on your MyGov account and uh, process your application from there. I see. All right. That would be the best approach because then it comes, yes. the, the request comes from the government and not directly from you. That's right. 
Oh, wow. Okay. So uh, one last question, Vishal. From out of yeah. this crazy, probably last two weeks, what is the most frequent questions you, 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 question that you always get asked when, when your clients call you? Yeah, first of all, uh, you know, we get like not only business clients and not only clients uh, who call us these days. Uh, we, we get calls from our clients who have done tax returns with us previously, uh, their family members and their friends, or, uh, or if they have recommended uh, to their friends and other business partners, they all are calling us this time. And the one simple question, whether they are an individual or, or, or business, is the one question is uh, straight, like uh, always common. What is there in it for me? Or what is there uh, in for my business? How can we get some help? Uh, because everyone is... Uh, facing this difficult situation. We have seen already a lot of people have lost their jobs or their hours uh, at work has been reduced uh, substantially. Or a lot of our clients, they, they, have, they are forced to shut uh, their businesses down. Uh, like I'm talking about restaurants and cafes. Uh, they, they cannot serve uh, uh, as they used to do before. Uh, they can only do uh, deliveries and takeaways, which is only a fraction of their, their income. So yeah, there, there is a pain in a lot of uh, businesses and uh, in wider community. But hopefully government has done the right steps. They have taken the right steps helping those people who are in need. And hopefully we'll get it uh, quickly out of this situation uh, if we just uh, follow what government is saying right now. Yeah. Uh, now, Vishal, if people wanted to... Uh, get in touch with you and contact you and ask you more questions, what would be the best way for them to do this? What would be the best contact details and how would you like them to approach you? Yeah, if you want to reach out to me, uh, we, we, our office is closed, but uh, even today, which is a normal public holiday, I, I'm, I'm seeing a few of my clients today. So I'm free uh, for my clients and for uh, someone who is, uh, who want to know something about these things, you can always contact me on my office number, which is 9056-3399, or my mobile, which is 0433-663-964. Or you can send me an email at vishal at taxassistau.com.au. All right, I'm gonna put all this information down the, in the Dropbox and uh, probably people who I guarantee that a lot of people will probably have more questions because each business is different and each person have a specific uh, story as well that you have to deal with and uh, I just wanted to thank you so much first to do this on a, on a public holiday and uh, and thank you thank you for being open and for sharing with us uh, all the information that you have I, I do understand that at a lot of the stuff still not finalized. You don't, and we don't have answers for everything, but I, I do appreciate like your time and uh, your big heart of, uh, and trying to help as many people as possible. And yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Vishal, for, for giving me the opportunity to interview you and for giving people the opportunity to uh, listen from uh, an accountant directly and from a, uh, a qualified person uh, the correct information so thank you so much thank you Pina thank you very much uh, I would like to thank you as well uh, for uh, spending your time uh, particularly on on public holiday uh, even though we are working from home but yes uh, thank you very much for uh, spending, spending some time for this thank you all right I wish everybody a super happy Easter stay at home stay safe enjoy the long weekend at home I, I guarantee all of us we have a lot of uh, little projects that we still haven't got the he head around it so just stay safe stay home guys and thank you